Teachers are professionals. Their knowledge and skills are distinct from other professionals. They have a legal obligation to remain professionally current and to exercise their expertise on behalf of all students. What teachers know and do does intersect with aspects of the skills and knowledge of other professionals, parents, and educated members of the public. Unlike a nurse or labor lawyer, the teacher's work feels familiar to everyone. A favorite teacher reveals the qualities of an effective teacher, but the teacher's work is more complex than we often admit. My research on professional autonomy focuses on how teachers understand themselves and their relationships to authority, to images of good and bad teachers, to changes in the world around them, to children who do and do not remind them of themselves, and to their own learning as they grow up in a profession that they grew up in. Professions that have human experience and interaction at the core of their activities are inevitably touched by psychological knowledge and experience. How do people learn? How do we understand the refusal to learn or difficulties in learning? If our students are not mastering our learning objectives, are they learning something else? Is that a good or a bad thing? And the teacher must always be able to ask, can I tolerate my best efforts challenged as being insufficient, useless, or even cruel. Teaching is a philosophical exercise. Teachers must be curious about the important questions. What knowledge is of most worth? What is the purpose of education? What counts as the public interest? What about the public good? Are these two the same or different? And the teacher's work responds to political decisions, and the teaching profession is itself a multi-layered political creature. It seeks to influence political decisions. We all count on those interactions being robust, thoughtful, and intelligent. In other words, teachers must contribute to the big ideas that a society has about itself and about education. So my research looks at the ways these three areas of human experience intersect and talk back to each other in the lives of teachers. Autonomy in my research does not mean freedom to think and act as one might wish. I've learned from teachers that autonomy means being able to consider why you believe what you do about teaching, learning, and the world we share. It means being interested in what your beliefs mean to others around you. So the biggest question we face is this. How are we going to live together? How will we survive and thrive in the world we've made and must go on making together? Teachers do not have the answers to these questions. No single profession or discipline does. But teachers do form the broad and deep front line where we all begin. And this is why my research focuses on the thinking, acting, and judging that teachers do. That is their autonomy.